Okay, so let's review some exponents. The first thing we're going to do is review some positive exponents as well as what happens when you have an exponent of zero. So the very most important thing you need to understand is, number one, the large number is called the base. The base is the number that's going to be repeated. The upper, uh, on the upper right hand corner, the small number is the exponent. The exponent will tell you how many times the base is going to be repeated. So in this case, since it's 2 to the 4th power, 2 will be repeated 4 times, which is going to give me 16. Here, the base is 2 and the exponent is 3, so th this is going to be, 2 is going to be repeated 3 times, which looks like this, and that's going to give me 8. In this case, 2 is repeated 2 times, so that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. And in this case, 2 to the 1st power means 2 is only repeated once, which is 2. Now, how do I repeat a 2 zero times? How does that even work? Well, let's pause for a second and look for a pattern in the work that we previously showed. Here, how did 60 become 8? 16 became 8 because I divided by 2. Okay. Well, how did 8 become 4? I also divided by 2. And how did 4 become 2? Well, once more, I divided by 2. So, what you could do is continue this pattern. In this case, if I were to divide by 2 one more time, the answer would be 1. So here's the fact. Positive exponents indicate repeated multiplication, hence 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 for 2 to the 4th, 2 times 2 times 2 for 2 cubed, 2 times 2 for 2 squared, etc. But the other important fact is that a number raised to the zero power is always one. Always. It doesn't matter how big or small the number is. If it's raised to the power of zero, it equals one. So let's take some problems to practice with. In this case, my base is three. So that means I'm going to be repeating the number three. Well, how many times should I repeat it? Well, the exponent is 4, so that means I'm going to repeat 3 four times. So this is going to look like 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now, here is an expanded form. Okay, if they asked me to evaluate it, all I would have to do is multiply this out. So 9 times 9, and this would equal 81. So here, this is what we would call our exponential form. Here is what we would refer to our um, expanded product. And this would be our simplified or evaluated answer. So there's different things that um, I can ask you for. I might ask you to write an exponential form, which would look like this. I can ask you to ex um, write it as an expanded product where you write them all out. Or I might ask you to simplify or evaluate. So it all depends on the instructions. Now in this example here, this one's um, tricky for some people. Some people may think that this base is a negative 3. But the only thing, um, the only number being raised to the fourth power is the 3. So what this means, you can read this as the opposite of 3 to the fourth, instead of calling it negative 3 to the fourth. Why? Because this here is negative 3 to the fourth power because the parentheses tell me that my base is negative. In this case, there is no parentheses telling me my base is a negative number. So what this means is I'm going to take the opposite. And how do you take the opposite of something? You multiply by negative 1. I want to take the opposite of 3 repeated 4 times. So that's going to look like this. Okay. So once more, again, this is your exponential form. Here is my expanded product. And then what happens if you were asked to simplify or evaluate? Again, you would just multiply this all out. I already did 3 times 3 times 3 times 
3 up above here, which would give me 81, but then I have to still uh, multiply by that negative. So here would be my answer um, simplified or evaluated. So again, it all depends on the instructions. Now here, what is my base? The number being raised to the fourth power is a negative 3. So what this means is negative 3 is repeated four times. So once more, here is your expanded product. Okay, um, And if I was asked to evaluate it, I would multiply this all out. This would be 9, this would be 9, and this would give me 81. So here is my exponential form. I'm just going to put EF for short. Here is my expanded product, EP for short. And here is my simplified or evaluated answer. Okay, so now let's move on. I'm going to move over to negative exponents. So first what I'm going to do is start with positive exponents and find continue that pattern that I started earlier. So here, 2 to the first would mean I'm going to have 2 repeated just once, which is 2. And now 2 to the 0 power, we already determined from a previous one, was 1. And the way that we did that was because we divided by 2. Now, if you remember from the previous slides, every single time the exponents got smaller, I was dividing by 2. So guess what? 2 to the negative first, I'm going to continue the same routine. I'm going to divide by 2, which would mean this would become 1 half. 1 divided by 2. Well, 2 to the negative fourth would mean I'm going to divide by 2 again. So that's 1 over 2 times 2. I divided by 2 twice. Continuing on, if you have 2 to the negative third, you're going to divide by 2 once more, which is going to give you two, 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, which is 1 eighth. Please do not confuse it for 1 sixth. That's going to be a very common error. And once more, if I want 2 to the fourth, I'm going to divide by 2, which will add another 2 to the denominator, which will be equivalent to 1 over 16. So what I want you to pull from this is the fact that negative exponents indicate repeated division in comparison to positive exponents, which indicate repeated multiplication. So keep that in mind in the next few examples here. But another thing that I want you to realize is the fact that negative here, 2 squared, is 4. However, 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. Okay, so maybe you can see a relationship there. Let me give you another example. 2 cubed is 8, but 2 to the negative third is 1 eighth. Hopefully you're starting to see a relationship between the two. Let's just do one more. Hopefully that will cement your pattern that you're thinking of. 2 to the fourth is 16, but 2 to the negative fourth is 1 16. So hopefully you can also recognize not only are negative exponents repeated addition, but they can also be seen as the reciprocal of the positive exponents. So we want to know both of those facts because it's going to help us a lot in the future when we're working with exponents. So let's try out some examples. So here, because it's a negative exponent, I am going to repeat 4. But it's a matter of, am I dividing by 4 repeatedly, or am I multiplying by 4 repeatedly? Well, in this case, since it's negative, I'm going to be dividing by 4. So first of all, you have to start with 1, and then you can divide by 4 a total of 2 times. This is going to be equivalent to 1 over 4 squared, which can also be read as 1 16th. This would be your exponential form. And this would be your evaluated or simplified answer. So again, it all depends on what the instructions are. But another way you can think of this is it's the reciprocal. So if you put a 1 over the 4, taking the reciprocal of 4 over 1 would make it 1 fourth squared. Now here, 
What do I have here? Well, I have 1 over 8 to the negative third. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that it is basically a fraction. So that's going to start with 1 over 8 times 8 times 8, which is the same thing as 1 times 8 times 8 times 8 over 1. So here, if they asked it for an exponential form, I would say my answer is 8 to the third. But if they asked me to evaluate, it would be 64 times 8. Let's see what that is. 64 times 8. 48, 49, 50, 51, 512. And there you have it. This would be the simplified or the evaluated form. Okay, now last but not least, what is 9 squared raised to the 0 power? If you don't remember from earlier, it did state that any number raised to the 0 power is 1. So even though it's a 9 squared, doesn't matter. If this is being raised to 0 power, my answer is 1. And that's it. Now let's take what we've learned and apply it. Okay, so here I'm, um, well, all I'm going to have to do is expand 9 squared. So here I'm going to say 9 squared is 9 times 9. Okay, well, what about 9 to the 5th? What does that mean? 9 to the 5th means I'm going to repeat 9 a total of 5 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now here, most ch in most scenarios, they're going to actually ask you to write an exponential form because it's kind of um, ridiculous to have you multiply all of these nines out. So here, in exponential form, I would say the answer is 9. Well, let's see. How many times is it repeated? It's repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since the 9 is repeated 7 times, I'm going to say it's 9 to the 7th power. Now, what about this? This is one that a lot of students tend to get a little overwhelmed with. Well, you first want to start on the outside. Something is being raised to the fifth power. If I asked you what's being raised to the fifth power, hopefully your response is 9 squared. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to repeat 9 squared five times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, Again, you're going to be most likely asked to write in exponential form because otherwise it's pretty unreasonable for you to multiply all these out, especially by hand. So here, the 9 is the number that's repeating, so that's my base. Well, let's see how many times it's being repeated. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 all together. So I would say my answer is 9 to the 10th. And that's it. Now, here is another problem that tends to intimidate a lot of students just because probably out of their comfort zone, but I want you to see how easy it can be. So again, you start on the outside. What is being squared? Hopefully your response is 5 cubed times 12 squared. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this um, base a total of two times. So 5 squared, sorry, 5 cubed, 12 squared. There's repeated once. I'm going to repeat it once more. So 5 cubed, 12 squared. So now I just need to figure out how many have a, how many I have of each. So first five. The base of five is repeating three here and three here. So all together, there's a total of six. It's being multiplied by twelve. Again, let's count how many twelves we have all together. There's two here and two here, so that would be to the fourth. So my answer is five to the sixth power times twelve to the fourth, and that's all there is to it. Now moving on to the last section of this review. What happens if you have fractions? Well, you're going to take a step by step and do the things that you do know. For example, I know how to write 4 squared. It's going to look like this. 4 times 4, because the 4 is repeated two times. Well, what about 4 to the fifth? Same idea. You're going to take 4 and repeat it 5 times. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now hopefully you can recognize that some of these 4's are going to cross cancel. So for example 4 divided by 4 is 1. 
4 divided by 4 is 1. And at this point, there's nothing left to cross out. So I'm going to say the answer is 1 over 4. How many times was it repeated? 3 times. So you can leave it as exponential form, but if they ask you to evaluate, you would evaluate it and make it into 1 over 64. So again, it all depends on the instructions. Now I'm going to repeat the same process here. How do I write 4 to the 5th? I'm going to repeat 4 5 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since this is just a 4, I'm just going to write 1, 4 and be done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if I can cross cancel. Here I can cross cancel out of 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So my answer here can be set up as 4 to the 4th power since there are 4 4s four left. Or you can evaluate it and say that this answer is... Let's see, 64 times 4, 256. So again, it all depends on the instructions. Now, last but not least, what if it's an entire fraction that's being raised to the fourth power? What is that going to look like? Exactly what you think. You're going to repeat two-thirds a total of four times. So one, two, three, and four. So here you have two options. They might ask you to write it as an exponential form, so you would write it as two to the fourth over three to the fourth, which is essentially the same as this, and this is actually preferred. So that's not gonna be the most reasonable answer. They most likely will ask you to evaluate. So I would say two times two times two times two is 16. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 would be 81. Now before you circle your answer and you say that you're done, please double check to make sure that your fractions are reduced. If so, you have your answers. And there you have it. I'm hoping that this video helped. If not, feel free to email me. And like always, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, bye!